Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about four different types of authentication methods that you should consider if you're an application developer and working on making your apps more secure. My name is Shad Sluter. I'm a professor at Grand Canyon University. I teach computer security classes, application development, and web development with computer science. In this video, we're going to talk about authentication methods. So you can see from the pictures scattered around the background that there are far more methods than just a password. First of all, a secure password is a good idea, but think of your biometrics. You can scan your retina, you can scan your hand, your fingerprint, or you could use some kind of a two-factor authentication, or even better, two-factor with a special timestamp using tokens. And so that's what we'll see here in the next few minutes. Check out this news story from the year 2004. So Bill Gates predicts the death of the password. He says traditional password-based security is headed for extinction. It does not meet the challenges of our more needs for our information. So obviously for a long time, people have seen the needs for something better than just a password. Think about the purposes of passwords and our usernames. What's the difference between an identity and an authentication? Well, if you were to think of your username as your identity and then your password as your authentication, you've got the right idea. And so if you put things that are like biometrics in the play, then you can have both of these in one package. Identification means, can I find you? Are you the person that's supposed to be here? And authentication is asking the question, do I know you? So for instance, hi, we just met. Can you prove to me that you're the person you say you are? You say, your name's John. How do I really know that? Can you show me your driver's license? Can you show me your identification? Can I get your mother's maiden name? Or some kind of a question like that. A password is how we authenticate people normally. To contrast the difference between authentication and identification, I'd like you to think about how we would use DNA in a criminal case. So DNA can be used as evidence in court. But the question is, should we use it as to authenticate people or to identify the criminal? So look at the difference between identity and authenticate, and then register your answer. Which one is it? Well, let's talk about authentication first. Let's say if we tried to take a person that was already arrested for the case, there was probable cause, the police found them, uh, or maybe a video camera saw them, or there was a witness, and so the person's arrested and put on trial. Then DNA that is compared from the case uh, that was gathered at the, at the crime scene is gathered and kind of compared to the person. That would be trying to authenticate the person. However, think of it as if we'd used a DNA in a way to identify the person. So here's the scenario. DNA is taken from the crime scene. And then we compare it to see if there's a match to a million different entries of DNA that we have on file. And so we would take a million people, and if there is a 99% correlation or better, then we arrest all those people and bring them to trial. Well, obviously, the second case sounds more like what they would do in China or North Korea or somewhere where they're more authoritarian and not so much interested in human rights. So identity is not the way that you would try to solve this case. Now back to computer problems. Think of how you could make your, your application more convenient and perhaps better than just passwords. So biometrics is one solution that people have been working on for many years. So whether you do a handprint or a fingerprint or a retina scan, or you might even use your voice. So let's take a look here at an example from a movie from 1992 called Sneakers. Now the problem with biometrics is that there are false positives and false negatives. So you've probably been frustrated by your phone. If you try to press your fingerprint on it and it doesn't read it, it doesn't read it, it doesn't read it, and you think, ugh, the stupid thing, I wish just, if I had a password I could get in. Well the question is, should Samsung be 100% accurate in registering your fingerprint or should there be some margin of error? So if your fingerprint registers all the time and immediately, does that mean that your friends could also use your phone? Have you ever tested it? Can you fake your phone out? 
And so should some false, false positives be allowed? And I think the answer has to be yes, because they would annoy their customers too much if they were very, very picky. So they're getting better at it. Obviously, they don't want to just uh, let everybody into the phone, but they're more accurate than they used to be. Speaking of biometric authentication, here's a nice story. A doctor used silicone fing fingers here to sign in for colleagues. And so the story goes like this. A Brazilian doctor is facing charges of fraud. And so he was signing in his absentees, his friends at work, using silicone fingers that they faked. So they used prosthetic fingers to fool the biometric attendance device. Well, whenever there's a foolproof solution, there's always some pretty smart fools. Biometric security sounds like it's going to be great. Uh, if, we, if we could get it to work right all the time, then we could kill passwords. But obviously, we're not quite there yet. Another nice way to increase your security is using token authentication. So you can see here we have two different ways to take a token, a physical object, and use that for logins. So a static token could be like your company ID card. Or a dynamic token might be with this RSA secure ID tag that changes every 30 seconds, and that number that's on the tag is uh, used to as your password. And so both of these are physical devices that you'd have to either uh, fake or steal if you wanted to break in. So two-factor authentication with a secure ID looks like this. You use your login name, and then your passcode has to be entered, plus a password, and then this little keychain that has a unique random number on it every 60 seconds also has to be used. So far more secure than just asking for a person's password. So probably more commonly, you would use two-factor identification with your cell phone. A lot of times when you sign into a bank or some financial institution, they will send you a four-digit code, and it has to come to your phone before you can actually enter your password. So those are more secure. However, recently it has been, has been brought to the attention that it's possible to fake a phone as well. You can get applications that will clone another phone, and then you can receive and send text on their device without ever actually stealing their device. And so two-factor authentication has got some improvements to go and uh, using applications rather than just SMS texting. It, it really works, even though it slows down our logins a little bit. Another great way for an application developer to increase security is to use a process called single sign-on. We've all seen websites that say you can create a user account or you can just click here to sign in with Facebook or sign in with Google. And so this allows a third-party service to log in. Now the advantage here is that it's simple for both the programmers and the users. So for the user, they don't have to remember another password. For the programmer, you don't actually have to store any passwords on your service. So in many cases, when a, when a business is hacked, the uh, accounts of the, uh, let's say Yahoo, for example, 3 billion user accounts are downloaded and put away into text files and sent off to China. However, if there's no passwords to be associated with those usernames, then you don't really have the liability. You kind of have to trust Google that they're not going to get hacked which so far they haven't, but uh, they're probably more secure than any small business that you've ever worked with. And so security is actually improved when we have fewer passwords to remember. So in conclusion, we could say that authentication is a weak point in many secure systems. And so think about other things than just the password if you're going to create an application. Remember, authentication is not the same as identification. Use two-factor sign-on whenever possible. If you've got the money and you have security concerns, go with biometrics. Single sign-on should be a factor in when you're thinking of building any application. And also, if you have the ability to create authentication tokens, let's consider those as well. So, thanks for watching. Those are some ideas that you could use for authenticating your users. My name is Shad Sluter. As I told you, I work at Grand Canyon University. Check out the hundreds of other videos on my site to learn how to be a web developer and an application developer and to become more secure in your computer programming.